I have a lot of projects I want to do. Some of these projects I would have had to do no matter what. And some of the projects are extra things I need to do because I couldn't do them in the super cold week we had. Some of these projects are fixing things that have broken. A lot of them are improving things that I built or made before but need to be um, replaced or upgraded. And some of these projects are building something completely new and that needs to happen as well. It has been super, super cold um, the past week or so, um, but now the snow is starting to melt and we've had a couple warm days, but that hasn't melted all the way. But it's melted enough that I can do things. What makes this even harder though is we have is that we have had a week of freezing cold where I couldn't do anything except for the bare minimum chores. So everything I would have done that week, I had to push back. And then there were extra things because of the cold that I have to do as well. So I have a lot, a lot to do. I have a big long list in my head. Um, but it's kind of, I remember different things I'm supposed to do at different times. So I'm going to write them all down right now. And then see which ones I should do today. So I finished my list with everything I can remember. I'm sure I forgot a few, but I'll add those when I remember them. And I put stars next to the ones that I want to get done today. Some of the stuff I have to do is scrape out the tractor bottom, um, build a new tractor door, take out a nest box, add bedding to a colony, fix the Angora grooming stand because that broke, just stuff like that. And I think I'm going to take you guys with me as I do those things. So here we are with our tools at the rabbit tractor. Like a lot of other people, we had a super, super, super cold week last week. And the tractor got so snowed and iced in that we couldn't move it for a while. Because we couldn't move it, all the rabbit poop that would usually be left behind each time we moved it once a day didn't get left behind and it started building up and building up. And sometimes we'd have a big snow that'd cover it all up, and I was like, oh, it's gonna be okay. But eventually, for the last few days of the week, it stopped snowing, and it was building up, and it was just getting gross, and I was like, oh, no, what are we gonna do? I couldn't move the tractor because it was frozen there, and the poop and the snow had built up a thick layer in the tractor, so even if I didn't manage to move it, all the snow inside the tractor, it would just take the poop with us. We started losing some kits to coccidiosis, and it was cold, and I was I was kind of freaking out. Like, what are we going to do? Because they were dying, and the poop was building up, and every, I couldn't move it. So I took some hay, old hay that we had, and I put it down as bedding to kind of make it not a tractor anymore, but have it be like a mini colony, I guess. And that worked for a while, but... It ends up that we're running out of hay, so I couldn't do that anymore. So we have kind of a poop buildup again, but it's not nearly as bad as it would have been if I didn't put the hay down. This is kind of gross, but we also have a baby rabbit who is dead and frozen to the tractor in the very back. It had passed away, but it was so cold and there was ice and snow that it froze to the tractor. And I don't know how it's stuck to the tractor, but I can't really get it out. So that's why I brought the really long rake thing to see if we can unstick it since it's warming up now. So right now I'm going to take the spade and the little digger thing and the rake and all that stuff and try to get all of this old hay, old poop, and any snow that's left over all in clumps. It's like a huge clump all over the tractor. I'm going to see if it's warm enough that the snow has started melting, and hopefully it is, and so we can get all this nasty out of here and have it like a normal tractor again, move them every day, don't have them sitting on their own poop, and hopefully everything can get back to normal. So I came over here to open the door, and these guys are like crowding around it, gonna try to get out, so I don't think I can fully op like have the door open and scoop everything and clean like I want to with these guys in here. So I'm going to go up to the barn and grab a big bin to put them in um, so they can't escape, but then they're out of the tractor so I can thoroughly clean it out without having to worry about them escaping. The reason Ivanhoe is in with the babies and not in his own tractor is that it got so cold that his door froze shut so I couldn't open it even I put hot water on it. It was like so thick the ice that it couldn't even be melted with hot water. 
So I ended up, um, the wire was kind of coming off of this really old tractor, so I ended up lifting the side of it up and sliding things through the wire, and that was super hard, and eventually I just got fed up with it and put him in with the babies, and so this tractor is not going to be used anymore. It's breaking, and it's very old, and we're done with it, so that is why he's in with everyone else. Okay, so we have them in here, and now I can start cleaning. Okay, I'm finished. I scraped. There was, like, stuff. It was, like, iced over in huge chunks, and some of it was, like, all packed in, and I had to use my fingers to get the poop out, and it was kind of gross. But I got that dead rabbit out of there. I got all the sticking poop and the stuff to go through the bars, and I moved it. This is where it was, and this is where it is. So now... I can continue to move it. There won't be any more snow. It's too warm to snow. So now I'm going to put their uh, hay feeder back in and their water and then the rabbits back in because they they are ready to get out. I don't know if you can hear, but they are trying to scrabble up the walls. Um, but that project is done. I, I can go about my day more at ease because I was like worried and like you know it's just awful and gross but now it's all over it's okay it's gonna be fine they're on clean stuff I can move them all the time now back to normal ah oh, feels so good okay everything is done I do have more projects to do with them um I want to make a new hay feeder so that's why I didn't put their hay feeder in there I had hay in their hidey house so it sort of doubled as a hidey house and a hay feeder but um we're just going to leave that out for now because I put it in and then have to change it later today. So, But I just wanted to mention it because some people will wonder or ask or say, hey, you should do this. Yes, I am having cord in their water. I'm doing one tablespoon of cord per gallon in their water for five days as it is recommended to do. So that coupled with their cleaner environment and a hay rack that gets less poop in it should clear up the problem just fine. And now that the weather is warmer and everything I put outside doesn't freeze right away, I can finally give you guys some pumpkins again! And this will be great! It'll be something for them to do. It'll help get rid of all the pumpkins we have downstairs that we haven't eaten yet. This one's kind of small, so it'll be hard to, you know, cut up and eat. And in addition to all the great nutrients they'll get from the pumpkin itself, the pumpkin seeds will also be a great dewormer. So we'll have Corid in their water, They'll have a clean environment and pumpkin seeds. I bet these guys are going to be free of liver parasites in no time. The next project I have to do is add more bedding to the grow out colony. The place we used to get free sawdust from recently went out of business or moved or something. So we quite suddenly were out of bedding. And for a while I've been putting off buying bedding and being able to, you know, find dry grass in the orchard and and use shredded paper and stuff like that. But because we've had to have so many rabbits in this colony, I haven't had enough bedding to compensate for all of their poop. So about the time we were running out of bedding, the cold front happened and we couldn't drive to town to buy more bedding or buy straw or hay. And I was coming out here in the dark doing the bare minimum of chores because it was so cold and my fingers were, like, getting frostbitten almost. And, like, literally, I was inside and I could feel for, like, hours after, that, like, my hands felt strange and it was kind of creeping me out a little bit. So it ended up that the poop buildup got a little more than I would have liked. And then, coupled with the extreme cold, we've had a slight coccidiosis problem in here as well. We have had two out of 21 rabbits in here pass away from coccidiosis. But thankfully, I noticed what was going on, and I was able to scrape together enough bedding-type material to lay down, like, two days ago. And so it's been okay till now. But we have so many rabbits in here that their bedding needs to be added on again. I mean, it's been like three days and they need it more. So so we have a tiny, tiny bit of straw that I have gotten permission to use. It's not my straw. It, it was bought in for other animals, so I hate using it um, because it's not for the rabbits. But I really have no choice because we don't really have any other bedding available. We are going to go to town to get some more bedding, among other things, tomorrow.
So the day after tomorrow, we'll be able to re-bedding the whole thing and do all that stuff. I mean, it's going to be lots, and we're going to take out all the bedding and put down fresh and do all this stuff. But these guys need new bedding today, so I'm going to take a little bit of straw, even though it's not mine. And I kind of hate to, you know, steal other people's things that they bought and stuff, but I'm going to do it because these rabbits need it. So here goes. Okay, we had enough straw to give them a light layer of bedding. It will tide them over till Wednesday morning, and I feel so much better. For a while, it was freezing cold, and I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? And then I finally remembered, hey, we have this bit of straw. So, ah, oh, huge weight lifted off my shoulders. So while I was here, I was able to do something else on my list, was find a good lid for the hay thing. They were jumping in their hay and pooping in it, so I was like, oh no, that's going to contribute to their coccidiosis if they're eating what they poop on and pee on. So I had Jimmy rigged some um, like boards in there, but it wasn't working very well. And I had this board that's been sitting here for a while, and you know, once something sits for a while, for a long time in the same spot, you kind of forget you have it there. So that's hap that happened to me. But I used this board to cover the black barrel whenever we had the tractor rabbits out that was the lid so then i put it back i was like hey that might work for lid for the laundry basket and it actually did so i am super glad it really is funny how sometimes you completely forget about something when it's right there in front of you but i'm glad i remembered about it and i'm glad it works so four things on my list done one was clean off the tractor two was add more bedding to this place three was a lid and then four is continue to do cord in all the rabbits water they have cord in their water and the tractor rabbits do as well so i'm going to go in and see if breakfast is ready it probably is um and then get ready for the day you know shower and all that stuff and and then i'll come back out and do the rest of the stuff on my list because i still have a lot of things on my list i have to do Everything is melting. There's no more ice, no more snow. It's all just turned into slush. Oh, it's so warm too in the sun. So I need to build a hay rack or a hay feeder or something to hold the hay um, for the rabbit tractors. And I remember we had bits of wire here. Um, oh yeah, here they are. So we have three of these little wire square pieces, and we have this big piece. I was thinking, what if we take these little square pieces and make it like a bottom, and then four walls, so it's like a cube shape, and then you stuff hay at the top, and you make a little bendy thing that you can hang it on a nail or something inside the tractor so it hangs under the shelf. So that's what I'm going to try. I don't know if I explained it very well, but that's kind of what is going through my head right now. So we have three squares cut out already. And I'm just going to take those and make two more, just like them, and then we'll connect them. Alright, so I finished the little box. I used J-clips to connect it. And I think it looks pretty good for how long I took to make it. It was really quick. I'm glad I already had um, a lot of the supplies. And obviously, I don't know if this is going to work or not. If it does, then this will be the first prototype. And there will probably be many more improvements. I'm going to add to it or make it different next time. But now I just need to add a little strap or a hook or something so I can hang it to the tractor. Okay, so here is the finished hay rack. It does look kind of weird, but I think it'll work really well. At the top, we have a wire thing that we can hang it from. I wanted to make sure that the rabbits couldn't pee or poop on their hay. So if they jump up here, they can not poop or pee on it because we've been having trouble with coccidiosis. And if they poop and pee on it and then eat it, that's how they get it. So we have two boards. And then through the wire, we stuck two other boards so that these can't come off. The rabbits might chew these off, but they are kind of stuck in there pretty snugly, so I'm hoping that'll work. And then all of the sides are wire, the bottom is wire. So I think it'll work really well, and I'm excited to try it. Okay, so this is my plan of how to hang it. So in our rabbit tractor, we have, this is going to represent a top. So there's like an A-frame type here and it goes all the way down and we put this board there so they can jump up and they're all so we have the board and we're going to take this piece of wood whoops we're going to take this piece of wood and put a screw through the top so it stays still and then let's see how okay and then we're going to put this long screw through 
board. Like that. Okay. So basically, and then we hang it on here. So this is like the little thing, and it's attached from this to the top, and that's how I'm hoping it's going to work, and I think it's going to work like that. I'll let you know if it works or if it doesn't. So there it is. I put it up, and it's out of the rain. So, oh, they're trying to climb on it. So, so far, they're liking it. It's working. We'll see if it continues to work, but so far, I'm very pleased. Okay, so I just finished fixing the Angora Rabbit grooming stand. I had a piece of wood that had carpet on top all on there and it was nice but it broke off so I replaced it with a piece of wood but it doesn't have carpet on top. So I'm going to have to drape a towel over this whole thing for a while until we can get more carpeting but it's going to work for now. Coming to check and see how this is doing. Looks like the lid has worked pretty well so that's good. The straw is, it still looks nice and it smells good in here. And I don't see any dead babies, so it seems to be doing really well in here. There's nothing I have to fix, nothing I have to make better, um, no things they broke or problems that are occurring so far, so that's good. Oh, look, guys! It's finally warm enough that the babies are all out. They're all... Usually they were all snuggled up this whole past week because it's been so cold, but now they're all out running around. It's so cute. So this nest box has been giving us all sorts of issues. This one right here. The past three litters that have been born in this nest box have all died. The first litter to die in this nest box was Henwins, and she buried them, and then unburied them, and then buried them up again, and then unburied them too much, and all their fur got taken out, and they died. And that was before we had this little tunnel thing, so we added the tunnel, and that fixed that problem. Then a few days ago, Rinna gave birth in there, but she didn't put much bedding in there, and she didn't put hardly any fur in there, so all her babies froze. And then two days ago, Lolo gave birth in this nest box. She put tons of bedding in there. She pulled lots and lots of fur and had seven healthy babies. She was nursing them. They were in a beautiful nest and I was like, yay, finally, this nest box is being put to good use. There's a good litter in there. Everything was going so well. Then yesterday I came out and I saw these babies and they were frozen. They had tons of fur in their nest. Some of them were like out of the fur, but like like the top was uncovered off of them. But then some of them were still like encased in fur all the way around. It looked like Lolo had gone in there to nurse them, and then she'd hopped out, and then they didn't crawl back under the fur to stay warm. There were some under the fur, but there were some out, and they were all cold. I brought them in. One warmed up like two minutes after it came inside, so they weren't very cold for very long. They didn't actually feel cold, they just felt lukewarm, but none of the other ones woke up, so we only had one baby, so we counted that as a failed litter. But I'm racking my brains, why did they die? What was the issue? They had fur in there that they could bundle under, usually a mama doe nurses their babies, and then she leaves, and then they snuggle back in the fur by themselves and they're fine, but these babies didn't do that. They didn't look hurt or wounded at all. They had the nest box look the same. It looked great. I didn't really, I don't get why they died. So another rabbit had not hurt them or eaten them. They were completely protected from the wind. So the wind didn't do it. They couldn't have gotten rained on. They didn't get peed on. They were kind of skinny, but not abnormally so. So the problem wasn't Lolo nursing them too little. And I really couldn't think of any reason why they had died. It was so weird. I really still can't think of any, like, logical explanation for why they died. Other than they either uncovered themselves or Lolo uncovered them to nurse them. And they didn't cover themselves back up. They didn't burrow into the fur like they should have done, like they're supposed to do, like all the other babies have done. But this hasn't happened before, so it's not like Lolo's bad genetics makes their her baby super dumb or anything. And Ronwin, our buck, has sired many litters who are doing just fine. So it wasn't anything weird about him, and it wasn't anything weird about Lolo. And this was the second night they had had. This was their second day being alive, so it's not like somehow the nest was bad and they froze the first night. No, they survived a whole night that was pretty cold, and they were just fine. So the only thing I can think of is that it was a fluke thing. I don't understand why it happened. Um, that's kind of really weird. I never, I mean, the situation was perfectly right for them to live, but they didn't, and they all froze, and it was very strange. 
So the only thing I can think of that maybe, maybe it was the problem was that their nest box was somehow bad. I mean, maybe even though it's super far away from any wind gusts and there isn't really any wind blowing towards them, maybe it did get winded in and that's how they died. Though I don't see how wind could have gotten in there. Or maybe, I don't know, something about the nest box they were in was bad. Or it was just a fluke thing. So I have on my list to take the nest box out just in case that was the issue. But now I'm just kind of second guessing myself. I was thinking that maybe I should take that nest box out so that other litters don't die the same because we've had the past three litters die in there and so maybe it's a bad nest box. But now that I'm thinking it over more, the first time it wasn't the nest box's fault because, or it kind of was, but we made it better, so that wasn't the problem anymore. Second time it was mama's fault and not the nest box's fault at all. And this time we don't know whose fault it was. It wasn't anyone's fault, it was just... I don't know, it just happened. So, while part of me wants to take the nest box out because, you know, maybe I could save another litter, like if a mama decides to have babies in that nest box and they die and then I feel so bad, oh no, what if I had taken it out and they used a different nest box and then they would have been fine. But part of me is like, well, if it is that nest box, I want to know what's the problem and why that nest box is like it is, so I know not to design other nest boxes like it. And maybe the problem wasn't the nest box at all, so taking out a perfectly good nest box would be pointless. So now I kind of feel like I should leave it in, even if it is super bad and all the other litters die in it. I want to see why and how. And now I'm kind of hoping a mama rabbit will give birth in there and then see if it's the cursed nest box and they all die every time there's babies in there, they, they die. Or if their next litter we have in there is just fine and it wasn't a nest box at all and it was something else. So maybe I'll leave it in. Oh, but then I don't want to lose litters, you know, just for the sake of seeing what happens. I mean, that like those are rabbits' lives and the whole mama and giving birth and how hard that is and this is our meat and we're paying for it with our money and our time and this is these are lives and I don't want to, you know, waste them. But then it, it might not be... A cursed nest box. It might have just been random. So if I take it out, I have to build a new one and there'll be a lot of work for nothing. So I think I'm going to leave it in for now. And hopefully another mama rabbit gives birth in there. Maybe we could get Sayla or Ivy, who they've been great moms. Some of our moms are just not doing very good. But some of them are doing great. So maybe we could get one of the good moms to have babies in there. And then see if it is really the cursed nest box. Or if their litters do just fine and everything's great. So I guess I can cross take out the bad nest box off the list and without having to do any work. All right, so now I'm going to head back inside and check my list, check things off the list, see if I have time or energy or ideas for other things I can do today or if I have to wait for everything else tomorrow. There are some things that I can't do until tomorrow because we have to go to the store and buy stuff for that. Um, but there are some things we might be able to do still, but boy, I'm pretty tired after doing all this stuff. I've been problem solving and inventing and fixing weird things that happen randomly and thinking through what could be the problem of, you know, random weird stuff happening. I've been crouching in very strange positions trying to screw things into a rabbit tractor. I've had to step over baby bunnies like a ninja to put new hay down for them. It's been a very strange, very busy, very rabbit-filled day. Oh, and I just thought of more things I have to add to the list of stuff I have to do that I forgot to write down before, so let's go inside. Okay, so I'm back inside and I got 7 of 21 things done today, which I guess is pretty good for just one day's of work. So I think I'm going to not do any more projects today, and I'll see you in the next video when I tackle more projects on my list.